You know, when I said, would you like people to treat you as you, would you want people to treat you as they want to be treated? And you said, yes, you do. Do you know where I got that from? I got it from Jesus. And Jesus got it from the Old Testament. So what you're saying is your heart and your mind recognize the truth of Jesus' words. Would you feel that it's justice? You'd feel it's unjust. Now what happens if someone did it because you were a Muslim? Would you feel that that was unjust? Right, so Islam has taught you something that is unjust. Do you, do you see? Don't you believe as a Muslim that the one who created the world also, also gave you the book? So how can the book contradict the author of the world? Would you like to have a conversation? Yeah, from last week, yes. Okay, let's go over there and, and we'll have a conversation. So we gotta, we got to try and stand here, because this is a bicycle lane. Oh, actually, let's stand here. There we go, up against the fence. Yeah. If you just wait for the camera a second. Okay, we're running, guys. Okay. So, what, 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 I mean, obviously I'm known as Bob. Yeah. What are you... Zaid. What, Zaid. Yeah. Okay, Zaid. What, what is it that you want to talk about, bro? So, I've seen a couple of videos from last week. Yeah. Uh, one of them on um, the Hadith on uh, the Christians and the Jews. Yeah, so... so that, money. Yeah. Money. And I've seen one of your videos about the Quran promotes shit. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. So, I just want to clarify that for you. So which, which, which one are we going to talk about first? Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's start with the blood money. First. Let's start with the blood money. Okay. Do you, do you know what argument I was making last week? Uh, Could you so rephrase they're, my they're, argument in a single sec, sentence? A second citizen. Their class is, uh, yeah, Islamic law. Yeah. So, the, so, the argument that I was making last week was that the Quran and Islamic sources teach Christophobic attitudes and that Muslims under, Shari Muslims under Sharia law have a higher legal status than Christians under Sharia law. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So under Sharia law, as you know, in, in dia, the blood money, dia, which is paid instead of kisas, the, the idea is that if a Christian is killed by a Muslim, the Muslim's life can't ever be forfeit. Okay? But if a Muslim killed a Muslim, the Muslim's life could be forfeit if certain circumstances are reached. But if a Muslim killed a Christian, his life could never be forfeit. So, so for instance, if a Muslim kills a Muslim, the Muslim family can demand kisas in revenge and have the Muslim's life executed. But if a Muslim killed a Christian, the Christian family could never demand kisas and could never demand execution of the Muslim. Because, the, the, and, and so this creates a, a, a double standard. Now that's also explained in dia, in blood money. So if, if me and you were both killed, let's say we walked out of this park to get a cup of tea together, and someone ran us over and we were living inside a Muslim state, the blood money that would be paid for you is more than the blood money that would be paid for me, right? By the same person, okay? Now, would you agree that if we passed laws like that against Muslims, that would be Islamophobic? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So why is it not Christophobic and, and an apartheid system when Muslims pass laws like that against Christians? that one but what I do want to talk about is so with the blood money I mean in an Islamic in an Islamic state it wouldn't really occur that much because killing is obviously a big thing so I think if it's a big thing and the punishment that it has for it it would deter people from doing it away and um, well we Muslims believe that the sanct the sanctity of a Muslim is greater than a non-Muslim. The sanctity of a Muslim is greater than a non-Muslim. That's what you believe. Yeah. And you believe that because Islam teaches you that. Uh, that's what it says, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And that, my friend, is an apartheid ideology. 
Now, if someone said to you that because you're Asian, your life is worth less, worth less than mine because I'm white, how would you feel about that? You'd feel left out. Any other feelings? Treated different. Treated different. Would you feel that it's justice? You'd feel it's unjust. Now, what happens if someone did it because you were a Muslim? Would you feel that that was unjust? Right, so Islam has taught you something that is unjust. Do you, do you see? Now, do you think that as a human being we should treat people as we want to be treated? Or that we should treat people differently to how we want to be treated? The same. You want to be treated the same. And if you remember last week I said you were a good man. And I want to say it again, you are a good man, right? But you're already more in favor of Jesus' teachings than you are in favor of Muhammad and the companions' teachings, right? So if you recognize that Christianity is better than Islam, does it not make more sense to follow Christianity over Islam? Uh, I mean, these are just some laws. But, but are they fair laws? Uh, if the, the way you're talking about now, no. No. But that could change if I start first, study furthermore and find a different reason, I guess. But if there isn't, then no. Then obviously it's uh, Right. And, and so what I would say to you, bro, is that if you recognize that there is something intrinsically unfair about Islamic law, right? If you recognize that it's intrinsically unfair, then it's it, it's on you to pursue the good. You have a moral responsibility to find the truth and to follow a great moral example. And if Jesus is that better moral example and his teaching is superior to Islamic teaching, then it's on you to follow Christ's teaching than to follow Islamic teaching. Do you see why I'm saying that? Now, my, my point to you is, bro, and, and I want to show it to you, yeah? Okay? That, you know, these aren't lies, I'm not making it up. So let me just, let me just quote to you a fatwa given by uh, Islamic scholars. And, and obviously these ulama know better than we do. Yeah? Okay. So let me just show you what they say. Okay, bear with us one second. So I'm going to give you my reference. My reference is from islamweb.net. Okay, and that's a fatwa service. You know, it's a place where Muslims go to get fatwas from scholars. Okay, so the question is about the penalty for killing disbelievers, to, for killing non-Muslims. Okay, this is the question. What does it mean that no believer should be killed in retribution for killing a disbeliever? Okay, so what it says, the scholars say, yeah, um, and I quote, scholars held different views regarding the killing of a Muslim in Kisas retaliation for killing, right? For, for in Kisas, retaliation for killing a disbeliever. We have previously clarified this in Fatwa 92261. Okay, now let's go to 92261 and let's hear what it says. So the Fatwa says, after a very long question, right, it says this. First of all, you should know that a Muslim should not be killed for killing a belligerent non-Muslim according to the consensus of scholars. According to the view of the majority of scholars, a Muslim should not be killed against a free non-Muslim under Muslim rule. The evidence about this is in the saying of the Prophet, a Muslim should not be killed for killing a non-Muslim that you can find in at Termithi. Right? So those are your scholars quoting your Muslim sources telling you that if you killed me and in his Muslim state, that your life shouldn't be forfeit. Now that's unfair. Because if you killed a Muslim in a Muslim state, the Muslim family could demand your life. Now, do you think that Islam was here to bring injustice? Right. But we've demonstrated and you've recognized that Islam is bringing injustice. Right. Then follow your conscience, brother. Be a courageous man 
and, and say to yourself, I want to follow a big example. You know when I said that you should, you know when I said, would you like people to treat you as you, would you want people to treat you as they want to be treated? And you said, yes, you do. Do you know where I got that from? I got it from Jesus. And Jesus got it from the Old Testament. So what you're saying is your heart and your mind recognize the truth of Jesus' words. So the question is, if you recognize the truth somewhere, should you follow it? And do you recognize the truth of Jesus' words? Uh, I'm not really sure. I haven't really... Well, let's look at it. Jesus said that you should treat others as you want to be treated. Is that a good way to live? So do you recognize the truth of that? So do you think that you should become a disciple of Jesus? Uh, I don't know, I'm still, I'm still learning Christianity right now. Fair enough. Because I'm studying both Islam and Christianity. Sure. And obviously, I want to know that Islam is the truth. Yeah. But obviously, if I want to know that's the truth, I need to study all the other religions. That's totally so fine. So do you have any questions about Christianity then, uh, that I can help you with while you're here? I mean, I've seen a lot of contradictions that people say. Such as? Uh, something Thank you. like this. So, Joab gave the sum, this, the sum of the number of the people to the king. And yep. there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men yep. who drew the sword. Yep. And the men of Judah were 500,000 men. That's in Second Samuel. Chapter right. 4. So that's not a contradiction. Because the first reference says the, the, the valiant men of the sword. So he was talking there. He was counting the trained warriors. In the second reference, he's just counting every one who could bear a sword. So that included soldiers who weren't trained. So those are two different numbers. So that's not a contradiction. But let, let's cut, cut to something much deeper because Muslims teach other Muslims that they shouldn't follow the Bible because the Bible's got contradictions and you've just shown me one there, right? So if I could show you a contradiction in the Quran, doesn't that mean that the Quran's false? Yeah. Right. According to the Quran, how do you know when to start and start your fast? How do I know? Yeah. Oh, when uh, the moon uh, when the moon comes out or something like that. No, you start your fast when the sun rises. Oh, yeah, when the sun rises and the sun sets, yeah. Yeah, and the Quran states that it yeah. says that you know uh, it says that when the white line appears on the horizon and you can spot white from dark, and that's when you, and you begin your fast until. Uh, sunset okay right so that's what Allah says you should start your fast with agreed okay the Quran also says that when Allah and his messenger have decreed a thing that it is not fitting for a Muslim man or woman to have an opinion on it or do you recognize that verse yeah do you need me to show you either of those verses or are you happy that I'm fairly representing the Quran just the first one because I haven't had okay so let's do that yeah, have you got your Quran with you? Uh, I've got the app, the translated version. Yeah, that's fine. Now, at some point, bro, we'll probably get interrupted. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But when that happens, I want you to stick with me and I want you to focus on what I'm saying and not what other people are trying to interrupt with. Okay? Right. So if we go... I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in Surah 2, 187... It says, eat and drink until the white thread of dawn becomes distinct from the black, then fast to the night. So eat and drink until the white thread of dawn becomes distinct from the black. So Allah has made it very clear about how you fast, has he not? Yeah. And Allah also says that if Allah has decreed a thing, it's not right for Muslims to have an opinion on it. Is that also correct? Or do you need me to show you that verse? Are you happy with? First was that one you said the so one? I'll show you. It's I think it's in Surah 33. Yeah, let me pull it up. Okay. So in Surah 33, 
If you move a bit closer, Brad, I promise I had a bath this morning. Right? 33, 36. 33, 36. And what does it say? Uh, it's not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah and his messenger have decided the matter that they should there, thereafter have any choice about their affair. Whoever so obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly strayed into clear error. Right. Yeah. So Allah is saying you can't have an opinion on something that Allah has clearly decreed. Yeah. Has Allah clearly decreed when you should start your fast? Yeah. So what do you do in Greenland when the sun doesn't rise and the sun doesn't set? What do Muslims do? Who do they go to? And what does the scholar do? He gives an opinion. So, m m Muslims are directly contradicting their own Quran. Now that's an example of Muslims contradicting their Quran because the Quran didn't know that the, the world was round and that the sun only rises and sets in certain places, not everywhere. So the Quran is directly contradicting nature. How is it possible that the direct words of Allah could contradict the direct works of Allah? That the works of his hands should contradict the words of his book? We're also confused with the question. So the Quran thinks that everywhere around the world, the sun rises and sets the same. Yeah. And it decrees how Muslims should keep the fast. I think so. Yeah, we've just read it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So how does a Muslim follow that injunction in Greenland where the sun doesn't rise and set? Now, more to the point, why does Muhammad not know that the ruling in the Quran actually does not apply to different parts of the world? Because didn't the, did, don't you believe as a Muslim that the one who created the world also, also gave you the book? Yeah. So how can the book contradict the author of the world? Yeah. Well, you see the verse that you said about um, yeah. 336, that one was talking about um, the marriage of um, Zainab, the first okay. daughter. Yep. Um, and how she was going to get married to um, the Prophet's companion, yep. his name is Zain. Yep. Yeah. And the pro uh, Zainab's family didn't like him, didn't like the Prophet. Yep. So that, that meant that um, that verse was revealed to to them, or to him, and then he revealed it to them, and then they went on with the proposal. Right. Them. Hold on one second. Just think about that. You you called her the Prophet's daughter. Yeah. Did the pro did the Prophet marry her? Are you sure? The, pro the prophet married his daughter. Mm, prophet, the prophet married his cousin, his first cousin. So what actually happened, the full story, you can find it in Al-Tahari volume 8. And what happened is, Muhammad visits the house of Zaid. And Zainab is in a state of undress. She's not fully clothed. And Muhammad sees her and he's, he finds her enticing, let's say. He, he likes what he sees. Okay? Now, up to this point, Muhammad had, want, you know, had, had arranged for Zainab to marry Zaid. Yeah. Zainab was his cousin. Zainab was his cousin. Zainab was the cousin of Muhammad. And Zaid so was Zainab, his... Zainab was the, the, the daughter of Muhammad. No, cousin. First cousin. That was for Zaid. Zaid is... No, Zaid was his adopted son. You've got it mixed up. Zaid was the, the adopted son of Muhammad. Yeah. And Zainab was the cousin of Muhammad. And then the verse... So what you've got here is the fact that Muhammad lusted after a married woman. Now, is it a sin or not a sin to desire a married woman? Uh, no. Unless it's not a sin. Unless you act upon it. Okay, unless you act upon it. So then, Muhammad has this sudden revelation from Allah, which says, Behold, thou didst say to one who had received the grace of Allah and thy favor, retain thou thy wife and fear Allah. So initially, Muhammad said, because Zaid then, when he discovered this, Zaid came to, to Muhammad and said, I'll divorce Zainab. And Muhammad said, no, no, keep your wife. And then, Allah is revealing this verse in connection to that moment. 
So he's repeating what Muhammad said, yeah? But thou didst hide in thy heart that which Allah was about to make manifest. So what did he desire in his heart? Well, he desired Zainab, right? So this woman who was married to his own adopted son, he now desires to marry. And then Allah goes on to say, Thou did fear the people, but it is more fitting that thou fear Allah. Then when Zaid had dissolved his marriage with her, with the necessary formality, we joined her in marriage to thee. Well, is that a verse in the Quran? Or? Yeah, that's Surah 33, Ayah 37. So you can check it yourself. Now for me, I, I have lots of problems with this. Okay. See, did you did you remember I said we'd be interrupted? Yeah, I can understand you are. Yeah. Why you lie? Why you lie? You said the Prophet Muhammad desired that. Is that in text? You're a liar. Is that in text? Read it, read it, read the verse in uh, with voice, read the verse, read the verse, and we will see how Bob is a, such a liar. Now, I told, you, I told you that I would be interrupted, okay, read the text. and I read advised the text. you to stay focused on our conversation, the yeah? Because this is the manners the of the Dai here in the corner. Now, notice how rude they're being, yeah? So, you've just got to focus on our conversation now and try your best to ignore him. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. When you said to one of one on whom Allah bestowed the favor and you bestowed favor keep your wife and fear Allah while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose and you feared the people where Allah has more right for you that you fear him so when Zayd had no longer any need for her we married her to you in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons when they no longer have need their either. adopted sons so you see, I'm not lying. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that, that Muhammad desired her. So in Sahih, now focus on me, because I did say we'd get interrupted. Yeah, focus on me. No, yeah, yeah, focus on me. If you, bro, if you engage him, he's just going to interrupt more. Focus on our conversation, yeah? Right, make a decision for yourself not to be pressured. This happens at the corner, yeah? Okay, so let me, in Sahih al-Bukhari, for, uh, for, I think it's either 4788, 4788, we read these. Are you listening? Are you listening? Those ladies, Aisha said, I used to look down upon those ladies who had given themselves to Allah's messenger and I used to say can a lady give himself can a lady give herself but when Allah revealed surah 3351 I said this is Aisha I feel your Lord hastens in fulfilling your wishes so what was what did Allah do for Muhammad? So this is in Sahih al Bukhari 4788. What 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 is it that Muhammad what was it that Allah did for Muhammad? What was it? Answer this. Answer this. I'm claiming that your biblical Sahih al Bukhari 4788. Like Mark said. Right? Show me I'm wrong. So, Prove to me that I'm wrong. Aisha said, your Lord hastens to answer your wishes. What did Allah do? What did Allah do for Muhammad? According to Surah 3351. Bro, focus on our conversation. This guy is just not going to stop. This is the manners of the Dawah team. This is the manners of people pushing Islam. Because he so know, answer, you know, focus on what it says. So in Surah, di brother, can did you, you come to me or you, did I come to you? Can you? Can you? Can did, you prove to did these you, people did, how you, you came to me God, exactly? Right. Focus on our conversation. To, to yeah? him. Can you? Can you prove to him? So in Surah 3351, I'm just going to have to raise my voice. Be a man of word. In Surah 33, that that your biblical God. You see, now, I have 51. Can you? Can you? Can you? One second. What's the Let's focus. What's the 
right? Yeah. yeah. Was a prostitute. Yes. Yeah. And there is any yes. problem with it? Yes, this is a big what? problem. It's lesser this than a woman. Is your God example. Is thou mayest God defer God example. any of them that thou pleasest, and thou mayest receive any thou pleasest, and there is no blame on thee if thou invite one of those that house uh, set aside this were nigher to the cooling of the eyes the prevention of their grief and their satisfaction that all of them which thou hast given them and Allah knows that is in your hearts and Allah is all-knowing come and just step this way bro yeah come and step this way right so in this surah Allah is saying the, the marriage between Zainab and Muhammad is legal. Like, that's the desire in Muhammad's heart that Aisha says, Allah is quick to fulfill your desires. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, because Muhammad married Zainab. Answer me, answer me. Now, is that did right? Prove to you? Did he prove to you that the is that right? he desired her or not? If what you're saying is true, then no. Yes, exactly. So what you did need to show, do is look at the story in Al-Tabari. Yeah. So in Al-Tabari, focus on that. me, just ask ignore this guy. Like, do you that. think he's being ask rude right now? Ask him that. I'm yes. Him that. Ask him that. Right. Ask him that. No, no, hold ask on, brother. 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 Shall we stop our conversation? Because do you want to talk to him now or do you want to stop? No, 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 no. brother. Question. If you're going to just listen question. to him, question. we should stop. Ask him how can you okay. biblical God permit brother. a prostitute to massage him? What, what I want to address here, to what I want to address like here, sin. what I can want to address that? here. Can he answer that? What Can I want to address that? here Why he is the fact that you recognize that Muhammad... When he lies about you, right, he lies, brother, he you said, can't focus right now, so let's stop. What I want to give you do, what I want to do, what's your name, bro? He didn't. Zaid, it was really nice talking to you. To you that? I want to give you a gift. I want to give you a gift. Have you got a Bible? You are such a liar, boy. You see how he's the coward? You have Bible gateway. But I want to give you an actual gift, right? I want to give you an actual gift. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain to him how your biblical God? So here's a here's a gospel of Mark. Can you can you have a read of that? That's my gift to you. You've been very polite and you've been very civilized. And I want to thank you. Okay. Can you now? I want to remind you, bro, that you said that the moral teachings of Jesus was greater than the moral teachings of Muhammad. How he permit a Remember when I said about treating people better than you? He called a woman This is how we Christians are being treated across the Muslim world right now. No, that's that's the way when he comes to you. What I'm saying to you, bro, is you've got to be strong to separate yourself to you, from the pressure of people like him question, from the, question, the pressure of people question. like him prove to him prove yeah to him that okay you've, you've looked at my evidence show him, consider prove it to him consider it for yourself okay a prostitute you look at yourself can you answer that can you answer that and you know come back and ask me another question i warned you that this would happen did i not warn you that this would happen because they're very predictable yeah you say they're very predictable yeah he God bless you. About the okay. So now, you know, so now let me answer your question, Sam. So now let me answer your question, Sam. So you call. quoted no. you quoted the Bible when Jesus allowed yeah. a prostitute to yeah. massage yeah. his feet. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's what he said. Go ahead. Yes. And he said that we Christian yes. and he even said it like we Christians should be ashamed of yes. this. And they want you to quote And the reality is, brothers and sisters, I want, I want that to our Lord... Now notice, he asked the question, yeah. I want you but to the Dawagandist can't go even ahead, listen to the answer. No, he can't even to listen to the answer. Our Lord yeah. allowed yeah. a prostitute yeah. to massage his feet. Yeah. Why? Why? He said, Why? Why? Because Anyone from the lowest yes. person Mark, to the highest person can serve the Lord I'm Jesus Christ. Mark, your social Mark, status yes. your is no hindrance yes. to Mark, serving yes. the Lord Jesus is. Christ. Amen. At his birth, How kings came to here. offer gifts. Why you not quote Mark? But our Lord allowed a Lord, a prostitute to wash his feet with incense and 
and tears and to dry them with his hair. Notice how the Muslims behave in the park. This is how we will be trapped when Muslims dominate any area. This is why Muslims tried to kill Nisa Hussein in Bradford, England. This is why Muslims tried to kill and did kill a Coptic priest in Egypt two days ago because of the hate-filled attitudes that you just witnessed with your own eyes. Now let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen, I am not saying that every Muslim in that you meet is a hate-filled Muslim. No, I am not saying this. I have met good Muslims. I have been friends with good Muslims. I've even dated good Muslim women. But, 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 ladies and gentlemen, but, ladies and gentlemen, the Quran and the Hadiths, the Islamic sources of Islamic law, denigrate Christians to being second-class citizens. Don't believe me. Think I am lying. Go and check with the Coptic Christians of Egypt. Go and ask the Christians of Pakistan. Go and ask the Christians of Indonesia. Go and ask the Christians of Malaysia. Go and ask the Christians of Northern Nigeria. Go and ask the Christians of Syria and Iraq. Go and ask the Christians of Afghanistan. All of these people are persecuted as second class citizens. In Saudi Arabia, your own government website tells you that expressions of religion other than Islam are strictly forbidden. And you see that same kind of hate-filled attitude being expressed by this Muslim right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians under Islamic law are second-class citizens. If we oppose a racial apartheid in South Africa, why can we not oppose a religious system that would denigrate Christians and Jews to second-class citizens under Islamic law? In Islamic law, if a Muslim chooses to become a Christian, they will be executed executed for making a choice that all of you take for granted. Ladies and gentlemen, your media and your politicians and you virtue signaling celebrities are lying to you when they tell you that all religions teach the same. They do not teach the same. They do not have the same values. They do not teach the same beliefs. In the Old Testament, it says that foreigners should be treated like the native born. That is the Christian understanding of equality before the law. But in Islamic law, we Christians would be made second-class citizens. That is our experience over 1,400 years of living under Islamic law. Don't believe me. Think I am lying. Well, go and ask the Greeks. Go and ask the Romanians. Go and ask the Turkish Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, you must make a choice 
whether you will be the sheep of the media and the government or whether you will free your mind of the t lies of the progressive hypocrites who consistently try to malign Christians who are persecuted by saying, well, all religions do it. All religions are the same. They ignore the plight of Christians in Egypt. They ignore the plight of Christians in Pakistan. They ignore the plight of Christians across the entire Islamic world. A world that is not united by ethnicity, is not united by government or economics or culture or language. The one unifying principle in all of these lands is that they reference Islam as a basis for their legal system. Ladies and gentlemen, educate yourselves about the plight of persecuted Christians. Educate yourselves about what it means to be a dimmy. And do not be weak in tolerating injustice. Do not be a coward in speaking out against it or standing up for the rights of Christians across the Islamic world. Any questions? Any questions going once? Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? Okay.